Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. Let's read some questions here. And then uh, we got to wrap it up here. All right. Mandalorian pinball machine. Hi, Bill. Hello from Australia. Hope you are well. Would love to see you tour here at some point in the near future. Uh, I would love to do it. Um, I got my Mandalorian pinball machine. Great game. Really enjoying it. You got one of those things? Those things seem really fucking cool. I just don't have any. I got the kids. I have no room for it. Uh, It's awesome to hear your call outs in the game. I didn't know that happened. Puts a huge smile on my face every time. Hopefully Stern, the maker, will send you one if they haven't already. They have not, and I'm not asking them to. I have no room for it. All right? And uh, I enjoy pinball, but I don't need one in my house. I don't play it to that level. <laughs> if I see one, I'll go play pinball, but I'm not like a, uh, a pinballer. Um, but, you know, it takes up a lot of space, right? All right. Hey, pussy hater. Oh, Jesus. This might be from the ladies. Um, Oh, Jesus. I went 0-4 in my picks this week after going 4-0. Hey, Carrot, no top. I cannot believe your response to the lady whose boyfriend had a cat that meows loudly at night. Oh, I can't even remember what I said. Uh, You immediately put the blame on the dude and told her, fuck him and his cat. He's a piece of shit. Dump his ass. Well, yeah. They had been together for three months, and every night the cat meows so loudly this person can't sleep. All right. I'm paraphrasing, but that was the gist of it. Usually, even when you have a hot-headed reaction to something, you are able to stop yourself and think of it from the other side, which is a big reason, big part of why I like your advice portion of the podcast. Well, thanks for the almost fucking compliment. Look at you putting yourself above me. Usually when you have a hot-headed reaction. Um, but here, you're 100% on the girl's side. Yeah, I'm on the 100% on the side of like, letting somebody get a good night's sleep. Yeah, what kind of an asshole gets into a relationship if they have a cat that fucking meows all night long so loud that the person that they're with can't get any sleep? That'll literally drive somebody insane. Anyway, do you really not see why the guy might be hesitant to just get rid of something he loves so dearly? Uh, no, I just, you shouldn't fucking be living with somebody else. At some point you got, look, I love my pit bull dearly, but I knew it would eat my kids. So I gave it away and I found someone that could fucking handle the dog, which it, he did until the dog passed away. <laughs> I don't understand this. I think you just like, you're one of these people that psycho loves animals. You know, maybe that's what it is. Do you ever think that? Maybe you're, maybe you're getting a little hot headed here. Anyway, for a lot of people, they consider their pets to be like family. How about that chick gets some earmuffs or earplugs? Oh, fuck you. (laughs) There's a lot out there that work great. Oh, you don't feel them when they're in your ears. All right, I wear earplugs all the time because my ears are shot. You do feel them. You do feel them in your fucking ears. And I've even gotten those high-end ones for musicians, and they end up not working after a while. All right? I mean, I have to go home and listen to meow, 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 the whole fucking night. I have to get earplugs? I'm not the one screaming and yelling. Listen, if I was in a relationship and, a, and the person had a cat and the whole time the cat was trying to sleep, I was going, hey, hey, hey. I can't yell too loud. I'm in the hotel. I would expect to be the one that gets, you know, I'm the problem. I'm going to be gone. Right? Anyways, let's get back to, uh, you know, seeing it from the cat's perspective. Um, some earmuffs. Somebody's going to wear earmuffs. Earmuffs, do you mean like, like earmuffs like your, your ears are cold? <laughs> I don't think that's the problem. You need something that gets rid of sound. Um, there's a lot out there that work great and you don't feel them when they're in your ears. That's not true. Or maybe shut the door and get a white noise machine that would drown out the sound a bit. Listen, I didn't say to get rid of the cat. I didn't say that. I said, get rid of the guy. And the cat goes with him. Get the fuck out of here. This is it. 
That is the tip of the fucking iceberg. If somebody's going to show up with something that just yells and makes noise all night. Uh, yeah, I think maybe that you just you're into animals and you don't really even understand human beings. How about that? All I know is if a girl said to me, it's me or your dog, I would show her the door 10 times out of 10. Well, that's fine. And you can keep your dog and you can jerk off. Was she supposed to sit there and deal with your dog growling at her? Or shitting in her slippers and still fuck you? I mean, who? I, I, <laughs> well, you know, there's these companies that make plastic, you know, booties that you can put on before you put your feet in your slippers in case there's dog shit in there. Uh, maybe you're not a cat person or something, but it's a myth that they don't show affection. They can be every bit as lovable and as loyal as a dog. Well, I think the fact that you have to, to show that they're fucking awesome, you have to compare them to dogs, says a lot about cats. Um, yeah, I don't have any beef with cats. I don't have any beef with cats. If you have, there's a lot of cool cats out there that just sit in the windowsill. You know, they walk around your property and the road, it's fucking, you know, they, they know not to come by there. It's like when you see an American flag and a Trump sign, no one's breaking into that house, right? Same fucking thing. I like cats. I don't have any fucking problem with them. I don't want to fucking live in a one where one won't shut up the whole night. Shut the fuck up. We're all sleeping. All right? Or let the fucking thing out, whatever its problem is. Let it go run around and murder some shit, you know? All right. Anyway, he said, I, I li like I said, I just literally can't believe you took her side so hard. Buddy, you just love cats. You just love cats. I get it. Without even considering what the guy might, be, might think about his girl telling him to get rid of something he clearly loves a lot. Um, he doesn't clearly love anything a lot. That's what you deduced from that because you're, you're superimposing your love of cats and pets and that they're a part of the family. You're also thinking that I never had a pet and I don't know what that feels like. While, all the while calling me hot-headed like I have knee-jerk reactions to shit. You know, for the record, but I don't pre-read these either. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of shooting from the hip here. Um, hope you revisit it at least. Have a great day and go fuck yourself. Hey, buddy, uh, I, I don't plan on revisiting it. Like there was, this was some bad moment in history. It's unbelievably fucking selfish to have a fucking pet that is keeping the other person in your life up and to do absolutely fucking nothing about it. And so, you know, maybe you could get a sleep apnea mask and fucking, you know, duct tape it around the cat's fucking face. Why do I have to put something on, the, on, on my girlfriend? All right? Fucking cat is living here rent-free. It shits in the house. We take care of that. We feed it. We rub its fucking belly when it's in the mood. If it isn't, it tries to scratch us, you know, instead of just being like, hey, I, you know, I'm not into this. However, a cat would fucking communicate that. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. You know something? I think you need to revisit it at least because nowhere in there did she ever say that this guy loves this cat more than love itself. All right? That was all shit that you put in there and you got all butthurt because you, you love your kitty cat, which I think is fantastic. And I think you should live with your kitty cat until it dies, God willing, 17, 18 years from now. And, uh, but I think if that cat is a cunt and you choose that cat over somebody else, uh, you don't deserve to have them. All right. I don't think that's fucking a hot headed response. I don't know, but you know, I don't think I've reached your level of, of, you know, enlightenment. All right. Southern accents. <laughs> Did you ever think that maybe just maybe? Maybe that cat saw action over in Iraq and has PTSD. I mean, how much of a backstory are you going to build for this fucking cat? All right, Southern accents. Now I'm going to have to listen to people talking about shelter animals. Uh, southern accents. Hey, Billy the Kid Burr, on the topic of Southern accents and ignorance, I came across this pretty cool and quick explanation of where the different accents and drawls. Nothing else that's just appeared? You mean come from? The women in the video explains how the American Southern speakers are the only ones left who still sound 
like our ancestors. All right, is that a good thing? You mean the slave owners? <laughs> I mean the people who exterminated uh, Indians? Uh, she explains that the first and second generations from Great Britain spoke in more of a British accent, but the kids of those parents began to develop an elongation in the way they talk. Well, then they, they didn't. I mean, we initially came over here with, with the accents of whatever country we came from, right? The only ones who sound like our ancestors. I, I don't know about that. Um, the, women in, the woman in the video then shows the different accents from the various southern states. It's very interesting, and I thought you'd enjoy it. All right, I'll check that out, and I will, I will tweet out the link here. Um, Belgian listener trying to understand cancel culture. Oh, uh, you owe it to yourself at some point to go to Belgium. Oh, you got to go there. And how seriously they take beer, and every beer has its proper glass. It is just a fucking art form. Um, man, if I ever go off the wagon, that's the place to be. Um, all right. Dear Bold Burr, uh, big fan of your work, humility, energy. Well, talk to the cat person because they think I'm a fucking hothead. And uh, yada, yada, yada. All right. I don't know. I don't know you. I know you don't read this shit anyway. All right. I'm reading it. You know, I'm going to therapy now. I'll take a compliment now. I'm living in Belgium. Come here someday. I, I did Antwerp one time. Brussels, and I saw Tommy Aldridge in the fucking uh, lobby. And I said, Tommy Aldridge? And I knew he was tired from the fucking road. So he turned around like, hey. And I just said, thanks for all the great music. And I just walked away. Didn't ask for a picture, no autograph, no fucking nothing. But I got to talk to him, which was awesome. Brussels is full of Anglophones, close to f the folks you get to meet in Scandinavian countries who all speak perfect English somehow. Um, well, let's not get crazy. They, don't, they, they speak English I can understand. <laughs> let's not get crazy. Welcome to Sweden. Um, I must say, I struggle to get the whole cancel bullshit going on in the U.S., I know we have it here too, but as a sort of watered down version of what you guys have. Once again, a great U.S. first to spread on the world. Thank you. I know. Sorry. I do get the idea. I do get the snowball process of it. Well, then there it is. Yeah. It all starts with the good idea. There's guys taking their dicks out at work. They're fucking raping women and they have no one to go to. And yeah, that and let's, we should get rid of these guys. And then it becomes a moneymaker, both uh, with news organizations and, and these nonprofits, air quote, that fucking start up. And then, you know, it's no different than like when a hurricane happens and a bunch of people lose everything. Everybody else wants to help, right? So what do they do? They fucking, you know, they uh, start sending money to these organizations that pop up. And inevitably, you end up finding some of them are bogus and people just keep the fucking money. And this, this stuff, this cancel culture, Me Too shit, unfortunately, is no different. There's always going to be opportunists. And uh, you're starting to see people use cancel culture now that they're educated on how the snowball works to try to just take somebody out who didn't even do anything. They just don't like his politics. And it is really fucking amazing to watch all of these people that are so-called progressive sit back and say nothing and just let it happen because they also don't like that person's politics. It's pretty sickening. Um, anyway, I do get the ID, says, and I get the snowball process of it, yet every time I try to dig a bit into, it seems so disproportionate that I end up confused. Let me explain my confusion. On the recent Dave Chappelle thing, I see famous Americans like Joe Rogan, like Bill Maher, sort of jumping on the subject and trying to defend their fellow comedian. Yet whenever I see the actual attack, by which I mean the first outrage take and not the even lazier retweeters. No, the retweeters are worse. They just see the accusation and then they just write. And I'm surprised why. <laughs> You know, actions have consequences, you know, big surprise. And they don't know. They probably haven't even watched the clip. 
Anyway, I see some dude or chick with a rather low quality media platform, mediocre audience, which is what I meant by disproportionate. Yeah, they're the ones that get it going, I guess. I don't know. I, I try to ignore all of that shit. He goes, I'm not trying to make you say the obvious I know right. These untalented wannabe famous douche dick riding the easy train of lazy outrage to get some publicity. This seems very clear. Well, you actually just described most of media. Um, you know, there's just a lot of stuff to look out there, a lot of video games to play, a lot of shit to stream. Every month there's people walking around going, oh my God, have you seen Squid Games? It's the greatest show ever. It's the greatest show since the greatest show a month ago. And everybody's got to stream it and get caught up. So I think news agencies, um, is that how you say it? News platforms, people getting in trouble gets clicks. So that's what it is. And then when a person defending themselves is, you know, somehow considered going against the narrative, so then they don't really cover that. So they just sort of become, you know, they get used to take people out. It's fucking gross. Uh, anyway, what I don't get is what's the concrete basis of all this shit? Could you define the stages of cancellation for me? The example you brought with Norm MacDonald on his multiple hilarious SNL bits on OJ helped me a lot understanding his being kicked out of the show and also made me discover the guy a lot better. Thank you so much for this. The guy is now s sitting on the top, on my top comedian list. That's awesome. Alongside your ginger ass, of course. Uh, there's a big gap between the two of us, but thank you. Hopefully, your more than likely real experience with this can shed a light on the subject. And dude, come to Brussels. Don't make me go to London. These fuckers left the union. They don't deserve you. Also, out of religion and out of therapy, uh, good for you. Now it's time for Zen. Uh, fellow Buddhists here won't push his practice any further than this line. Um, I could get into that Buddhism. I still need a lot of therapy, though. You kind of got to work your shit out. I can't just be like, well, you know, I'm not going to worry about what I can't control. zippity doo da, zippity day. I, dude, I can't explain cancel call. I can't exp explain it to you. Um, I can't tell you that I am a lefty and I am uh, shocked at what people on the left are doing to other people with no trials or no nothing. And it has just gone so fucking beyond, so beyond, you know, the initial, you know, legit dirtbags that they were getting. And now, now what they do is they try to just, you know, dig up some sort of fucking something that can get you canceled. They literally go out and try and find it. Um, to get rid of you because they don't not not even because they want to stop whatever they're allegedly even happened if it even fucking happened they just don't like you and they're using <laughs> you know what i mean it's just fucking weird they go i i hope somebody got raped so i can get rid of this person it's like wait wait you shouldn't be hoping that the fuck like it's just it's gone kind of bananas and i think uh i don't think it's a lot of people that are doing it and i just I'm hoping, you know, I feel like there's just a bunch of people in the middle on the left and the right are just sitting there waiting for shit to settle down so they can poke their heads out again because everybody's trying to, like, not get in trouble. And uh, there's got to be a way for the middle, the rational people to be like, hey, can everybody just fucking settle down here? Like, what are we, everybody has a right to have an opinion. Everybody can say, you know, you know, can chime in just because they don't agree with you doesn't mean you now have to fucking... Try to end their ability to, uh, you know, earn a living. <laughs> I mean, does any of that sound crazy? It's fucking, it's fucking bananas. Um, anyway, girlfriend wants to paint my toenails. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, go, go, go fucking buy a doll. Hey, Billy, one punch. I've been with my girlfriend for about six months now. I'm 32. She's 30. She's great. We've been getting along well. I've met some of her friends and we both spent many nights at each other's apartments. I got a couple of tattoos, but she has a lot of very big ones and plans for more. Uh, she also has gauged ears. I'm imagining that's when you stick like the washer in your ear and a septum piercing. 
That's the nose, deviated septum. Yeah, okay, this is all fine, and I find her very attractive. I'm just trying to get her personality across. Most of her belongings are unique heirlooms or just out there like decorative animal skulls or gemstones. I just want your opinion on this thing she keeps bringing up. She wants to paint my toenails. I said, no. She said, why not? No one will see. Are you so out of touch with your feminine side that you can't get your nails done in a hidden place? Well, that's an easy answer. You just say yes. (laughs) Or you just say, um... Are you so up your ass about what you want to do to me that you can't hear me saying no? I would just make a joke out of it. Be like, no means no. You know? What, what, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you got to give it up to women. I mean, they are just the best manipulators. Can I paint your toenails? No. I mean, no means no. Isn't that what they say? Why not? No one will see. Are you so out of touch with your feminine side that you can't get your nails done in a hidden place? Well, you know, I'm not a woman. Isn't that a good thing? Do you want me to have a big feminine side? Aren't I supposed to balance you out? You know, I mean, you want to go to fucking brunch and go get a, go get a fucking bun cake? I don't give a shit. <laughs> She goes, I like the way she does these odd sort of things, but it makes me feel weird having it done to me. I feel I show enough femininity towards her in our texts and Snapchats. Why do you have to show that towards her? It's because feminists are control, uh, controlling the narrative. And if you don't fucking do shit like this, they automatically think, you know, that means you're a toxic male. You know, I don't know. I think she'll respect you more if you just stand your ground. And it's just as long as you're being a good guy, you're not calling her a cunt and you're taking her out to dinner. Like, I don't think that you, (laughs) I don't think that, you know, it's, you know, she does, you know, don't fucking paint my toenails if you don't mind. Um, Anyways, does she want me to go through my routines with this paint on so she can think about how I'm being reminded of her? What? Is she trying to mark me? Wait, I missed something here. I I like the way she does all these odd sort of things, but it makes me feel weird having it done to me. I think you should honor that. You should honor that emotion. Just use what they do. You know, you're not honoring my feelings. You're not making me feel safe. That's what I would do. I would just say, you're not making my toes feel safe right now. I feel I show enough feminine towards in our text and Snapchat. Is she trying to mark me? See, that's your paranoid. They'll do all of that. Does she want me to go through my routines with this paint on so she can think about how I'm being reminded of her? Or am I being too defensive about this whole thing and it's just some fun? Um, Listen, it could be fun if that's what you want to do. But if you don't want to do it and then you do this, like, I don't know. This just seems like this, this new chatter out there that this is a balanced relationship, that you as a man just always do what she wants to do and that shows that you're a strong man and that you're in touch with your feminine side. And fuck that. Fuck that, all right? If you're a good guy and you're treating her right, okay, there's going to be some things that she wants to do and you're going to want to do them and then there's going to be some things that she's going to want to do and you're not going to want to do them. And that's all right. Let's, let me ask you this. If you said something to her, can I do this? And she said, no, would you still be fucking asking? You know, maybe she needs to get more in touch with her masculinity side. (laughs) Anyway, um, he goes, it hasn't happened yet, but she's brought it up a few times. Do I go, go along with it or shut the idea down for good and see how she takes it? Thanks and go fuck yourself. Uh, I don't think this is about her. This is about you, all right? This, this, a relationship should not make, be made or make a break on this. And if this is something you don't want to do, then don't fucking do it. That's it. Um, yeah. Why does she want to do it? You know, don't even do that because then you're back in the conversation and they'll just fucking wear you down. And then you'll actually have to have that conversation and you you know, one day when you're in a fight, you know, I fucking bring in the trash barrels. 
I pay my half of the mortgage. You know, I let you paint my fucking toenails. And your fucking neighbor's head swivel around. Um, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I don't think, I think that's a very dangerous way that men are starting to think. I've noticed with a lot of you younger people writing in, um, a woman asks you to do something in a relationship and you don't want to do it. And then you immediately question yourself like, wait a minute, am I being toxic? Am I not being enough in touch with my feminine side? And let me ask you this. Do they ask that question? Uh, is there any sort of social pressure for them to ask that question? I guess they have that. Am I pretty enough? Are my tits high enough? You know? I don't know. But don't they kind of put that on themselves? I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, you know? Most of us are happy if you just bang us. You know, I think that's all it is. I, I, I don't think you should have to go through the fucking, the clown makeup on your toes if that's something you want to do. But like, uh, I, I, I'm a big believer that, you know, you, you roll with most of the shit, you know, that they want to do. Because if you don't, they're going to pout. And you have to, de now you got another kid you have to fucking deal with, right? So you just go with that shit. But then there are certain things, you just got to be like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Why? What are you, what are you afraid of? Uh, I'm not afraid of anything. You just asked me if I wanted to do something. I said, no. Why is it so difficult for you to hear me? You just, it's kind of fun. You just go right back at him like that. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I wish I could just fucking remember in Ghost when Patrick Swayze would go into, you know, Whoopi. I wish I could do that with some of you guys and just fucking have the conversation. I could have it done in three minutes. I'm not saying when I walked out of you that they wouldn't be a little pissed, more pissed than they were three minutes ago, but these are really easy fucking things to handle. It's a good exercise and you should go out and go do it. So that's it. And ladies, if you're listening, if you're asking your guy to do some shit and he doesn't want to do it, why don't you fucking lay off every once in a while? You know, we're still going to give in to 90% of your bullshit. And I think, you know, can't you live with that? All right. It's the holiday season, everybody. Don't skip over Thanksgiving. That's it. Go fuck yourselves and I'll check in on you uh, on Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.